Hey there guys, welcome again and in this tutorial we're going to be making sure that the player can kill another player and is going to respawn and also if you kill a player it's just as if it's normal there and you can pass through him and all that until he responds. If you're interested stay tuned and I'll see you after the intro. So we're here now on my whiteboard as usual and we have a client a and a client b so when this player kills this other player for example this guy dies what exactly happens is we're not going to be deleting the node because reinstancing it will be a lot of work so we'll just make it disappear just temporarily and after the respawn timer is done it will reappear back just as if nothing happened basically that's the workflow we're going with and i'll see you in the tutorial so we're going to start off this tutorial by going to the player script and over here at the top we just want to make a variable called hp and it's just going to be equal to 100 basically 100 is the hit point of our player so if we want to damage him we're going to just reduce this hit points basically so over here we're going to make a damage function which is going to take in a value and we'll just say hp minus equals value then if the hp is less than or equal to zero then we want to tell the server that oh this player is killed but if it's not equal to zero then we're just going to say okay damage the player in this tutorial we're going to be sending packets really frequently because we want synchronization with the players and their hit points and everything so the next thing is we go over to the other player bullets then over here we're just going to check if the integer version of body.name that's like the current body that it hits um if the if it turns an integer if it's equal to our current id then this is us that it hits then we're just going to say body the damage 25 and as I said in the player here, it's going to call the damage function pass 25 as the value. So HP minus cost 25. And if you do the math, that means if four bullets hit us, then we're going to die. So with all this done, it's time to go to the server. Now over here, we're going to create a remote function, player damage, which is going to take in the remaining hit points of that particular player. Remember when we sent it over here, player damage, comma HP, we're sending the current HP of this player and i'm really sorry i forgot something in other player.gd what we need to do is we're going to set hp also equal to 100 just so that the other players and players are going to have 100 by default so when we call this function we're going to get this player that sent it and we're going to send and we're going to tell everybody that oh this guy has been shot so update his hp that's why we're passing in player id and the remaining hp here so we go back to the client and in the server script we scroll down and just after we instance new bullets, um, after the function here. So on the player damage function in the client, so we're going to set P to the node that just got hit. As you can see, nodes.get node that ID. Then we want to check if if it's not us, then we want to set p.hp equal to hp. Then after that, actually like this very cool lightning effect, just as if the player is turning all white and all, so that I can just give it a feel there. So I have to actually add this code in. So basically what we're doing is manipulating the modulate property. So as you can see, previous modulate equals to the current modulate of the hit player. Then we want to manipulate the color to be 5551. Basically this means all white. Then we're going to wait 0.1 seconds for a timeout. And after that, we're going to set P dot modulate back to previous modulate. If you're not a beginner, I actually feel you understand this code. But if you are, you can actually just play the video back and hear me explain all this over again. Or if you just want that um, lighting effect, you can just copy this code. So with that being done, we're done with player damage. Then remember, if HP is less than or equal to zero, they want to kill the player. So we also have to do that. So we go back to the server and just under the player damage here, we want to set player killed, um, a player kill function which as usual gets the player that sent it and also tell everybody that they have killed that particular player we go back to the client go back to the server and just under player damage here directly under the function we're just going to set killed player to the particular node that they killed then we're just going to get the shape of that node and set it to disabled whereas disabled equals to true and also set the physics process of that node to false so this actually this get node shape is not actually meant to be shape is meant to be collision shape so we go we're going to go over to other player dot tscn other player dot tscn and the shape we're just going to rename it to shape and go over to the player dot tscn also and rename this guy to shape then after disabling the player and setting the physics process false then we just want to hide the node 
So now we can run this, we can press play here and we we'll also run the server. And as you can see, when we shoot this guy about four bullets, you can see it's flashing there. It just disappears and if we go close to him, we can actually interact again because we disabled the collision shape and all that. So now the problem is as, the, as that guy is gone, he can't come back anymore. So we have to make him be able to respawn and also we'll probably put some kind of field screen over his screen here. So first of all, we're going to start by making the field screen. So we'll go over to scenes and map.tsn. So in the map, first of all, we're going to add a color rect. And we're just going to increase this to the size to cover the whole screen there. So we're going to set the color to black and alpha. We're going to turn it down a bit. So we're going to rename this to fill. And as a child of it, also we're going to make a label. So the label is just going to say respawn in 3 seconds. I'm going to just set the fonts and make everything look nice. As you can see, I think this is good. Just place it in the middle there and do the three dots behind it or something. And basically, you can actually make this respawn in 3 seconds to be counting down. But I don't want to actually make this tutorial unnecessarily long. So I'm just going to leave it like this. So if we go back to the server.gd, under here, we're going to check if the ID um, of the player that died is equal to our ID. Then if it's ours, then that means it's us that died. So we're going to get the fail node and just show it. And the fail node is just that fail screen that we just created. Yeah, in fact, by default, the visibility is meant to be turned off. Then we're going to wait for 3 seconds using yield.get3.createTimer3. And we're going to wait for the timeout. So after 3 seconds, we want to hide the field node. And for the last thing, respawn the player. So this is going to tell the server, okay, I'm done with dying. Uh, respawn me, um, something like that. And it's going to give it the ID um, of itself so that it can respawn. So we're here on the server and we're going to create... A respawn function also remote. We're going to be calling it from here. So it's also going to say respawn player and it's going to respawn an ID, the um, our current ID, and choose spawn location. So since we didn't delete the player or anything, respawn player is going to just be resetting everything that we set here. So as you can see, if nodes that has string ID, that means if we are there, I guess, which means if we are still around, we'll probably if we didn't disconnect or something. Then player is going to be equal to our node. We are going to get node the ID. Set the global position to location, which is actually a spawn location um, called from this function up here. Then we're going to get the shape and set the disable to false so that we can interact with it again. And set the physics process to true. Set HP back to 100 and show the player. Basically, this is all. I think we're going to run this, run the server, and run an extra client. So just click join game here, join game here. As you can see, we are in, we are in. And moment of truth, if we shoot this guy, I think four bullets. He died, responding in three seconds. And he actually respond at this spot, which is nice. Anyway, yeah, before I forget, um, if you notice, the spawn locations actually goes in this manner. And it always goes in that manner. And the reason is, over here in the server, we are not actually ever randomizing. So it follows a particular pattern, basically. So on the ready, every single time we load the server or something, or if you are doing this for a production ready project, if every time we choose a spawn location, then we just want to randomize. Basically, this is going to make the spawn locations to be always random. So we're going to close both of these. I'm going to restart the server. We're going to load this up twice. So if we join game on this, join game on this, um, as you can see now, the got instance at two random positions. And if I shoot this guy, after that he's gone, I can't interact anymore. And you see that he appears on this other side. Let me just go and see, show you that I can actually touch him. I can't come pass through him and all that. Um, but the moment I killed it, or kill it, he's no more there, I can't interact again. And he responds somewhere different. Basically, I think that's all for this tutorial. We have successfully spawned them in different locations, which is crazy. So yeah, I think that's all. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Smash subscribe and goodbye.